This video was made possible thanks to the support of our brilliant patrons. Your generosity is truly appreciated. Hello everyone and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity for Commander. My name is Martin. And my name is Alex. Today we have plundering pirates, offensive defenders, a space-time paradox and a rather annoying fly who won't leave the table. Apologies for the last one. Also, stick around to the end of this video to see who will be announced as the winner of our Affinity for Commander token giveaway. With that being said, let's take a look at those opening hands. My commander is Arcadius the Strategist. I keep an opening hand of Sunscape Familiar, Fortified Rampart, Wall of Mulch, Reliquy Tower, Tranquil Cove, Selesnya Guildgate and the Plains. Steven is playing his Mina and Den deck. His opening hand contains Arbor Elf, Primordial Sage, Chain Reaction, Game Trail, Verdant Catacombs and Two Forests. Calvin's commander is Admiral Beckett Brass. He keeps an opening hand consisting of Dire Fleet Poisoner, Lightning Rig Crew, Soul Ring, Cobbled Wings and Three Swamps. And finally, Ren's commanders are Regnar the Redeemer and Krav the Unredeemed. His opening hand is Viseresia, Taisha Karlov, Oketra's Monument, Oblivion Ring, Utterend, Caves of Kolios, and the Plains. Ren wins the die roll and starts things off by playing Caves of Kolios. He then casts Expedition Map and passes to Calvin. Calvin plays a Swamp and then casts a Turn 1 Soul Ring. He then casts Cobbled Wings and ends his turn. I play Celestia Guildgate and pass the turn. Steven plays Game Trail, having it enter untapped by enthusiastically revealing a forest. He then casts Arbor Elf and passes to Ren. Ren plays a Plains and sacrifices his map to put Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, into his hand. He then passes the turn. Calvin untaps and Ren throws a portion of his deck onto the table whilst trying to reveal the Urborg he just tutored for. Silly Ren. Calvin then plays Dragon Skull Summit, casts Lightning Rig Crew, and attempts to squash the fly that was hovering around the table. He misses, attaches cobbled wings to his goblin pirate, and ends his turn. I play a planes and then cast Sunscape Familiar. I then pass to Steven. Steven plays a forest and then passes the turn. Ren plays Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, and then casts Oketra's Monument. He then ends his turn. In his turn, Calvin plays a swamp. He then passes to Martin. I play an island and then cast my commander, Arcadius the Strategist. Moving to combat, I attack Steven with my familiar, dealing him 3 damage. I then pass the turn. Steven plays a forest and then casts his commander, Mina and Den Wildborn. He then plays Orin Reef the Vastwood and passes to Ren. Ren plays Tainted Field and then casts Viscera Sia. He makes a 1 1 warrior token with vigilance thanks to Oketra's monuments and then casts Taser Karlov, creating another warrior. Ren then ends his turn and Calvin responds by tapping his creature, dealing everyone else one damage. Calvin then moves to his turn. Calvin plays yet another swamp and then ends his turn. Shame about that lack of blue mana. I cast Wall of Mulch, drawing a card from Arcades. Next I cast Gomazoa, drawing once more and then move to combat. I attack Ren with Arcades, dealing him 3 damage and then move to my second main phase. I play Seaside Citadel and then pass to Steven. Steven casts Primordial Sage, and then plays Myriad Landscape. He then ends his turn. Ren begins his turn by attacking Steven with one of his warrior tokens. Steven blocks with his commander, and Calvin flashes in Dire Fleet Poisoner. He misreads the card, trying to give the warrior plus one plus one and death touch, but we spot the mistake and prevent it. Nice thinking though, Calvin. Ren gains a life and then moves to his second main phase. He casts one of his commanders, Regna the Redeemer makes a warrior, and then moves to his end step. Ren makes two 1-1 one, one warrior tokens sent to Regna, and Calvin deals everyone but himself one damage with Lightning Rig Crew before moving to his turn. Calvin plays Unclaimed Territory, naming Pirate, and then casts Dead Eye Plunderers. He then moves his Cobbled Wings over to his Poisoner, and passes to Martin. I cast Primal Rage, and then cast Fortified Rampart. I draw a card, play Tranquil Cove, and gain a life. Moving to combat, I attack Steven with Arcades, dealing him 3 damage. I then end my turn. Steven casts Ulvenwald Tracker, drawing a card. He then casts Rampaging Baelos, drawing once more, and plays Verdant Catacombs, creating a 4-4 beast. 
Stephen then passes the turn, and Ren responds by sacrificing a warrior to Viserys Seer to scry one. He keeps the card on top of his library, and then proceeds to his turn. Ren plays Radiant Fountain, gaining two life. He then casts his second commander, Krav the Unredeemed, makes a warrior, and moves to his end step. Ren makes two warriors, and Calvin shoots everyone for one with his goblin before moving to his turn. Calvin casts Pillar of Origins, naming Pirate. He then casts War Kite Marauder, followed by his commander, Admiral Beckett Brass. Calvin then passes the turn. I cast Wall of Ice, draw a card, and then cast Rapid Hybridization. I target Regna, and Ren responds by sacrificing the Angel and four warriors to Krav's ability. He draws five cards, gains five life, and puts five plus one plus one counters on his demon. My spell then fizzles, but I am okay with this given that the Angel still left the battlefield regardless. Next I play Reliquy Tower, cast Marble Titan, and move to combat. I attack Ren with Arcades, dealing him three damage, and then end my turn. Stephen casts Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, and uses her plus one ability to make a zero one plant token. He then passes to Ren. Ren plays Command Tower, and Calvin takes another swing at the fly. He once again misses, and Ren casts Archon of Justice. He makes a warrior token, and passes to Calvin who responds by tapping Lightning Rig Crew to deal the rest of us one damage. He then proceeds to his turn. Calvin casts Dire Fleet Ravager, causing everyone to lose a third of their life total rounded up. Well, that's one way to speed up the game. Calvin then passes the turn. I move straight to combat, seeking revenge on Calvin. I attack him with Wall of Ice, Fortified Rampart, and Wall of Mulch, and Steven with Arcades. Calvin blocks Wall of Ice with Dire Fleet Poisoner, and Wall of Mulch with Diathlete Ravager, and I respond by sacrificing Wall of Mulch to its own ability to draw a card. Calvin then takes 11 damage thanks to my creatures having Trample, and Steven takes 3 from my commander. In my post-combat main phase, I play Simic Guildgate, and then pass to Steven. Steven responds by sacrificing his Myriad Landscape to put 2 mountains into play, creating 2 more 4-4 beasts, and then moves to his turn. Steven plays Rugged Highland, gaining a life, and making another beast. Next, Steven activates Nissa's plus one ability, making another plant, and then moves to combat. He attacks Ren with three beasts, and Ren blocks with Krav, Archon of Justice, and a warrior. Ren then sacrifices the Archon and the warrior to Krav's ability, and chooses to exile Nissa and Rampaging Balos with his Archon's death trigger, which is copied by Taisha. Steven responds by using his Overworld Tracker's ability to force Krav to fight the Baloths, and Ren responds to this by sacrificing three more creatures to Krav's ability. Thank Urza for the stack. Ren puts three plus one plus one counters on Krav, draws three cards, and gains three life. Steven then sacrifices his Catacomb to put a forest into play, creating another 4-4 beast. The Balos then fight Krav, dying in the process. Nissa is exiled by the Archon's ability, and Ren gains two life, draws two cards, and put two plus one plus one counters on his demon. Combat damage then occurs. A beast is destroyed by Krav, and Ren takes zero damage. With the stack finally empty, Steven ends his turn. Ren plays Vault of the Archangel, and then casts Taser, Wars of Scion, making a warrior. We debate as to whether having two Tasers in play at once should cause a world-ending paradox, and come to the conclusion that everything should be alright provided that they never make physical contact with one another. Not yet finished, Ren casts Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim, making a warrior. He then casts Liliana, heretical healer, creating yet another warrior. Satisfied with his newly created army, Ren discards down to 7 and passes to Calvin, who as expected, deals the rest of us 1 damage of his goblin before moving to his turn. Calvin plays a swamp and equips cobbled wings to his plunderer. Moving to combat, Calvin attacks Martin with his plunderer, Ravager, and Warkite Marauder. He uses the Marauder's ability to make Arcades a 0-1 with no abilities until the end of turn. Martin blocks the Ravager with Gomazoa and his familiar. Before damage, Martin uses his Gomazoa's ability to put the Jellyfish and Ravager on the top of their owner's libraries, and then takes 10 damage. Calvin then passes the turn. Martin responds by flashing in Masako, the Humorless, and then proceeds to his turn. I recast Gomazoa, drawing a card from Arcades. Next I cast Absan Beastmaster, followed by High Alert. Moving to combat, I attack Ren with Wall of Ice and Fortified Rampart. Ren responds by sacrificing three warriors to Taser or Zov Scion to exile Arcades, 
transforming Liliana, heretical healer, into Liliana, defiant necromancer. Then makes a 2 2 zombie and then blocks Wall of Ice with Krav. Before damage, Steven casts Chaos Walk, targeting the demon, and Ren responds to this by sacrificing Krav and his zombie to Krav's ability. He draws two cards, gains two life, and makes two 1-1 one, one flying spirit tokens thanks to the combined abilities of both tasers. Combat damage then resolves, Ren takes 13, and I pass to Steven. Steven uses his tracker's ability, forcing the three mana Tasha to fight one of his tapped beasts. Ren responds by using Ailey's ability, sacrificing the other Tasha to gain four life. He makes a spirit and then sacrifices all three of his spirits to the remaining Tasha's ability, exiling the beast that would otherwise have been fighting Tasha. Moving to combat, Steven attacks Ren with all of his remaining creatures except for his plant tokens. Ren blocks Primordial Sage with Ailey and Lanoir Elves with Tasha. He then takes 12 damage and Steven moves to his second main phase, where he casts Chain Reaction. Calvin responds by tapping his goblin to deal everyone else one damage, and the board is then wiped of creatures, leaving Liliana as the sole survivor of this massacre. Steven then recasts his commander and ends his turn. Ren plays Westvale Abbey and then casts Sutra Priest. He makes a warrior, casts Resplendent Angel, makes another warrior, and gains two life thanks to his priest. Next, Ren uses Liliana's minus X ability, where X is two. He returns Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim, to the battlefield, gaining a life and then sacrifices his warriors to Ailey to gain two more life. Moving to his end step, Ren makes a 4-4 Angel token with Flying and Vigilance thanks to the Resplendent Angel's ability, gains a life and then passes to Calvin. Calvin recasts Diathlete Ravager, losing a life and causing everybody to once again lose a third of their life rounded up. He then equips Cobbled Wings to his creature and then ends his turn. I recast Arcades, lose a life and play Azorius Chancery. I return the planes to my hand and then cast Meek Stone, which I realise is not particularly helpful against Ren. Oh well. I then pass the turn. Steven plays a Mountain and then casts Surak the Huntcaller, putting a plus one plus one counter on him with the Auron Reef of the Vastwood. Steven loses a life to the Priest and then moves to combat. He gives Surak haste with his formidable ability and attacks Ren with both of his creatures. Ren casts Mortify on Surak, destroying him and then blocks Mia and Den with his angel. Feeling deflated, Steven passes to Ren. Ren plays Isolated Chapel, and then uses Liliana's plus two ability to make everybody discard a card. He then casts Butcher of Malachia, makes a warrior and gains two life. Moving to combat, Ren attacks Steven with his angel, Priest and Ailey, dealing him six damage. He then ends his turn. Calvin recasts his commander followed by Diathlete Captain. He loses two life, moves to combat, and attacks Ren with his Ravenger. Ren takes five damage, and Calvin passes to Martin. I move straight to combat and attack Steven with Arcades. Steven's life is reduced to zero, and I move to my post-combat main phase. I cast Dusk, hoping to get rid of Ren's Butcher, but Ren responds by casting Teferi's Protection. Ren's board phases out, and Dusk resolves, destroying the non-phased out creatures. Next I cast Dawn, returning a huge pile of creatures to my hand and pass the turn, well aware that I may have just shot both Calvin and myself in the foot. Oops. Ren wastes no time and moves straight to combat, dealing Martin and Calvin lethal damage in one attack, ending the game. Thank goodness for Teferi's protection, am I right? Well that's it for another video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Also, feel free to leave us a comment and check out our Twitter and Patreon pages, links in the description. And as promised, we will now reveal the winner of our token giveaway competition. We asked you to comment your best MTG jokes, and we were not disappointed with the results. There can only be one winner though, and this time it's Mr. Gelflin, for their witty colour pie related humour. We'll be running more competitions like this in the future, so be sure to watch our non-gameplay videos for more details. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time.